uh, you are able to yeah i can so uh, your email is this one only reddy.rajendra90 yes uh, i have i have mailed you uh, the uh, material actually yesterday's and uh, today's also i don't know it got okay. bounced off uh, i don't get key any you got, you didn't get it right indu i try to read indu ram ki you send it to us actually yeah. there we will uh, we will forward if uh, yeah cc to us oh. okay oh, okay okay sure yeah anything is fine hmm. so okay contact at zoom uh, contact at zoom training you just cc this one only right yeah what is the id for that that uh, forward it to contact uh, what is the alias for that zoom it's this one only right uh where is that uh, sequel dba dot online class at gmail dot com no 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 contact at uh, zoom training dot com okay anyway i'll just take it from uh, myuri or someone and uh, forward that no so she will do a test message okay you can you continue the class uh, yeah sure sure so okay raja so uh, what i sent was like uh, yesterday's discussion whatever we have uh, uh discussed and, uh, uh, and uh, I, even i already find out some of the versions for uh and uh, patches also members of uh, we sequel server and versions patches sp1 sp2 sp3 for 2008 saw that right well, yeah so there is already got uh, uh, internet i found some members and it's 7.0.6 or some like so so actually there is one uh, very good uh, link to that so probably mm-hmm. if you are using i hardly remember i should be this one only because i always use this and this gets updated uh, quite often so okay. this is the url uh, which i follow and it gets upgraded every uh, now and then whenever it is uh, upgraded i'll ping you check it off it is the okay. late it is the same one then uh, you can follow that otherwise it should be good so yeah it, okay. it is working so this has all the details uh, and second one is about the memory configuration which i told you so anyhow okay. i i will be sending that in mail so okay. where you will see like for which uh, particular ram setting what should be your min memory and what should be your max memory max so okay. hardly you should uh, uh, check in for uh, uh, maximum yeah, this one, uh, this- This, yeah, this is the same one you are just going through yeah. yeah yeah so i have installed this 2016 also in my uh, office actually that's pretty okay. good one but yeah up till actually 2012 uh, if you can uh, by heart uh, this numbers at least the rtm mm-hmm. version so you are aware like what is rtm version is whenever they release yeah. the first version to the market they call it as rtm mm-hmm. and okay. then uh, after yeah. that uh, people will see lot of bugs and all right so with uh, service packs they will release uh, and fix few of the bugs so like this okay. so in 2012 we have only two sp2s then how do you check yeah. like what are the patches which are getting what are the bugs which are getting fixed in sp1 you can go down actually and you can see what are the different bugs it fixes for each of the service pack here you can see uh, service mm-hmm. pack one when you click on that it will give you all the related so these are the bugs actually so poor performance yeah. when a query contains table joins so they will not ask you much mm-hmm. but uh, this will be like a very good guide for us to in case if you are selected and then you have to do something or uh, you face this error you have to just go through this site okay, okay. this is a very important yes yeah, and everything is done uh, what i have made is all the things the, the different integration services those things i have already uh mail the document which i created actually for uh, uh, some of the trainings so that should okay. be useful to you so pretty much i covered whatever we have studied yesterday uh, mm-hmm. and installation i was telling you right so that is uh, and there was another document on the installation stuff also it's not the basic uh, installation but what i meant to say is like which lo- which log files you have to check so what is the okay. log file we have yeah. to check uh we need to go for uh, like whenever we got failure we need to go to the batch folder then find for two different uh, log files one log file and one hexadecimal where we can find the 
change your information. Yeah, so it is a bootstrap folder. In that you have yes, log directory. Okay, yeah. that is known as bootstrap okay. folder. So, okay. and then you have summary.txt and some hexadecimal dot log file. So, just yeah. uh, it is like pretty much you can understand that and you can get lot of. I have actually copied from the net only, so that it will mm -hmm. be you know you can, it will be easy for you to refer. Again, if you have to search, means it will be uh, long. So, that is another one okay. which uh, they can ask you. So fine. Okay. So today what we'll cover is like uh, uh, two things. One is on the backup. Backups, recovery models, and on the indexing. Index means not at uh, just uh, what is index cluster examples and all. I'll not just go through that, but we'll go into okay. a level deep. So, which okay. includes, uh, which is what you are looking at, and this will be useful okay. for your performance tuning. So, deep in the sense okay. there are certain undocumented commands. So this I will, I will show in the practical sessions, but since these three days are theoretical, I will cover all these things for you. And when it comes okay. to our practical sessions, I will show you uh, how exactly it looks. Okay, and you do remind me also in our cluster sessions and all when we set up. Just let me know, and I can show you all these things. So here, what we'll okay. cover is okay. what are indexes, and what mm -hmm. are the different types of indexes. Uh, what are pages? I mean, we have already studied the pages, but in page, yes, page. what are the different pages mm -hmm. we have? What is mm -hmm. IAM page, especially for index actually, since we are dealing with this okay. index topic. Okay, okay. so once okay. we cover that, we will go into deep studying what exactly a page contains. So for that okay. we have two undo undocumented DBCC commands. Those commands are okay. DBCC int and DBCC page. So, okay. so which will tell you in a table, if you have 100 rows, how those rows are uh, uh, aligned in pages internally. Okay. And each okay. page, how the data is uh, structured. So those things okay. we will study. So this okay. is uh, pretty much on this one. So I can show. Uh, so this is the DBCD int. And uh, I will share you for the DBCC page. Uh, can you uh, see my screen fully? No, right? This is something. Yeah, else. I, I think you need I'll to drag it out. Yeah, oh, I'll drag it out. Yeah, yesterday I was telling, right? Uh, uh, a page is uh, how many byte? How many KB? KB, four KB. No, no. Yes. What you had is a four KB, but a page is eight KB. So eight KB is nothing but eight into one zero two four. One zero two four. So that that constitutes how much? Eight zero nine. Eight one nine six. Yeah. One second. Let me add text box here. So total is eight one nine six. Is that eight KB? Eight into one zero two four. Okay. That is equal to eight KB. Correct? Yeah. Yes. So out of which what happens is like we have a, a um, this ninety six bytes specially allocated for page for page header. For every page it will have okay. this page header. So okay. what is the significance of this page header is it will let you know uh, what page it refers to. At a high level you can say the table of content or the index page kind of stuff which will tell you like okay. this page corresponds to this memory, this location. I will show you practically also. So just mm -hmm. hold by on your analysis. But this is the page header similar to your okay. package also whenever TDS packet go. Any packet in your network also it has some header which will signify okay. what exactly this page is about. Okay? okay. And then okay. consists of the body or the uh, exact data page means where mm -hmm. the data is stored. So when you enter uh, any data in a row, that row data will be stored inside this particular uh, page, inside this body. Okay. This is known okay. as body and also the data page, data. And next comes okay. is the, this is the green color is all the free pages, free free space. Free page oh, so for free the space. indexing stuff. Yeah, for so pointing, page speed and all, right? So no, no, that is known yeah. as the offset. This is a different one. I'll tell you. This okay. is offset. Mm -hmm. uh, this will mm -hmm. be two k, two bytes actually for every page, okay. for corresponding mm -hmm. to each row, 
there will be a one okay. offset with two bytes okay. understanding so here how many you have five yes. right so that means yes. you have five rows telling that yes. uh, and each of, uh, uh, each offset is of two bytes telling okay. and pointing into the correct that particular data of that row okay. Okay. getting yeah. So you should understand, I will practically show that in DBCC page, but this is how exactly, uh, why I am showing you picture is, it will, uh, you know, imprint in your mind. First is the page yes, header, yes. 96 bytes, page so if any interview you ask the... you, yeah, body, and then free space, mm -hmm. this is an offset mm -hmm. which points to the data of, data corresponding to that particular page, and it is of 2 bytes, yeah. not 2K, it is 2 bytes, very small. Okay. So just tell where the data is, just pointer to that particular data, that's all. And okay. this whole 8096 corresponds to data. This is all for okay. data only. And this is specially okay. for page. So got it, right? Okay. So if you, any interview yes, ask you what, what does a page consist of, you should immediately recollect page this header. particular page. Page Diagon, header, yeah. the data page, mm -hmm. the data allocation, uh, and then the free space, new offset. Page. Row, row right? Yes. Got it right. What is row offset? Yes. Uh, row offset is a pointer which points to that uh, location. Yes, of that particular uh, pay, uh, row. Which is of two bytes. You can say data location. Data location. You can say data location. Okay. I'll tell you all these things. Uh, okay. When I show you those details. So this is again uh, similar to the above one only, which will give you another glance about C. These are like row offsets. So how many rows we have here? Three rows and three offsets. Three. This one is pointing to the first data row, one. and second okay. one to second. So third one. So each is of two bytes. Okay. Okay. So this yeah. whole is 36 he wrote, but each will be of two bytes. So maximum okay. it will not go more than 36 bytes. That's why it, don't go into this, but this will be two bytes. Okay. okay, so this is 8 into 107 total getting? Yes. Any questions here? So you should know what page is at any moment of time. Yes. So this picture is pretty yes. much should help you. So mm -hmm. this is about the DBCC page which I am talking about. So mm -hmm. let me cover it at the end once we move to the index, okay? Let me drag okay. it down so that I won't forget. Okay, coming to the indexes. So, uh, I just wanted to understand from you only, like what kind of information you have, so that we can go into that depth. So, basically, oh. everybody says we have clustered index and non-clustered index in a SQL Server. Yes. So, yes. what is clustered uh, and what is not? Clustered index is like it's only one for the table because whenever the clustered index is applied on the table, uh, it resets the rows in order so that uh, it can, uh, we can get uh, we can retrieve the data or the records faster uh, non cluster and the data uh, it is in the form of b tree so whenever we form a find index it, is, it forms in the form of b tree and the data will be in the leaf nodes uh, we have root nodes uh, intermediate nodes and uh, leaf nodes the data will be present in the leaf nodes when it comes to non cluster it doesn't arrange the data in um, uh, uniform format, but like uh, it is generally yeah. the data, the leaf node points to the, points to the data, but the data will not be receiving in the leaf nodes here in the non cluster index. And you can have a number of uh, non cluster index for the table. Correct, correct. So, yeah, absolutely, at a high level, I mean, uh, like whatever you have covered is pretty much simple. But uh, let me take an example and then uh, we'll give you a brief uh, so that you'll understand sure. more. So, uh, so what, why do actually we need indexes? Do a table exist without an index or is it compulsory that it should have an index? So, what are the no, uses it's of not indexes? Compulsory. It's uh, not so, compulsory to have an index on the table. Uh, if it's like if uh, the customer, if the client or the customer is using many times the table, so that you, if you want to get fast in the records, like preparing the fast in records, so we use indexes on that. So what happens uh, if you don't have an index? Uh, how uh, uh, how how do you retrieve the data? How do you retrieve the data? Yeah, uh, 
even if you don't have an index, it's similar way you retrieve the data, but like it will be it will be done in the table scan manner. When uh, when you do the table scan, the time the kind of time consumption or uh, retrieving of data will be higher when compared to having an index. Correct, correct. So we call it as heap actually internally. So yeah. when you don't mention any indexes, the in the database treats that as a heap. That's wherein uh, the heap concept comes. So heap is nothing but the data is stored, uh, how the data is stored, as and when you insert the data, right? So it keeps yes. uh, appending to the pages. So first, yes. uh, let's say you have some uh, some 36 pages. First it will write to page 1. Once it is filled, it will go to page 2, then page 3, page 4, um, according to the insertion of data. As and when you are inserting 100, 200, 300 rows like that, in the same order it will keep on filling those pages. So that is known as like in a heap manner it will just keep on. So how does the retrieval happens? When you write select star from that particular table where uh, uh, let's say student where or an employee name is equal to some something, some uh, uh, SQL uh, what is, it? is equal to some John. So then it will do a full table scan to see uh, where that particular John is to get the data. Absolutely whatever you said. So but, uh, so that is what is happening. That's where it, uh, this SQL Server has come up with this concept of indexes. So clustered index and non-clustered index. So on which columns you create the clustered index? Mostly on the primary key? Not mostly. It is on the primary key only. You cannot create no. non, uh, clustered index on uh, non-primary key. Okay. okay. It should be a primary key only. So primary key uh, is targeted for because you have to arrange the data in an alphabetical sequence. Alphabetical so yes. for the SQL to perform uh, very fast and in a genuine way, that is the ideal standard way uh, for us to create uh, clustered key on a primary key. So once you create a clustered key and then you can have an option to create uh, so many of uh, indexes in uh, uh, so for the uh, n number of columns. But there are certain disadvantages to that. So I will let you know what are the differences and disadvantages. So clustered, it's on primary key, that is of sure. And non-clustered is uh, on other columns. So uh, another question here they will ask is like uh, uh, when do you use cluster and when do you use non-cluster or uh, is it mandatory to have non-clustered index? So mainly when you write a query in such a way that you are retrieving the data, uh, a bulk of data in sequence. Let's say select star from, uh, uh, from uh, some some company where employee name like uh, percentile John percentile or employee name between uh, or employee salary between 10,000 to 20,000. So what you are doing is you are getting that bulk range, right? So yeah. it just has to fetch the pages, that's all. It just go to that pointer, fetch those uh, pages and then pages. you get the data. Yes. Yeah. So yes. I think you know that concept. So I will not go depth yeah. in. So, so that is how it is happening. Let me show. So this is how it is arranged. So here many people will get confused here. So what are this this last row and this middle row and this higher upper row? What are these exactly? These are the root page which uh, points to the exact location of the data. The second line is the intermediate node where it has divided into two two spaces like um, the root node is divided into two then depending on that the leaf nodes will be done. So that like yeah, so whenever uh, the whenever we execute and query uh, it looks for a particular uh, row or the particular data within the root page then it divides to the next level, intermediate level, then goes to the leaf node. So that yeah. the step of uh, it's like bypassing. Yeah, so basically a B tree. So internally SQL Server forms a B tree 
in this particular fashion. So are these a pages? This one, this these two are pages. Uh, uh, do you think these are all pages? The one which are marked in orange? Yeah. Yeah. So what pages they are then? So there comes uh, the uh, internals here. So the last okay. row of clustered index are the data pages itself. Means which contains okay. the data. So okay. that is nothing but uh, this one, this yeah. whole okay. data row. So those are the actual rows actually. If you wanted to find anything uh, related to that, you just, these are the data rows. But these are nothing yeah. but the IAMs, the allocation mapping kind of stuff, which gets created okay. within the server. So when I show you the DBCC okay. commands, you'll understand. So these are like a okay. intermediate uh, uh, index pages, you can say. So it will say that uh, if you want to search uh, 1103, you will have to, okay. it will help in redirecting to the direct uh, actual data pages with the help of it these. Points to uh, the, it points to the correct. actual data page. Correct. So, but these, the leaf nodes are the data pages in cluster index. Yes. So that, and they are arranged in ascending order. Okay. okay, so whenever a cluster index is created, the system internally creates a B tree, which mm -hmm. consists of the index pages pointing to the leaf nodes, which consists of data pages in ascending order. Okay. Got it? So that is how uh, it happens. So, but what happens in non-clustered index? So here, non-clustered index again. These are not the data pages. Non-cluster index are not the data pages. These, there is an intermediate layer which gets created for non-cluster index on top of clustered index. So first of all, the table should have clustered index, and then mm -hmm. on top of that only you can create non-cluster index. It's not that on a heap you create non-cluster. It is not possible. Okay. Okay. So yes. for non-clustered indexes to be created, uh, an interview that question is a uh, clustered index. So on top of that only you can create non-clustered. So what happens is once uh, this creation happens, so this creation happens, mm -hmm. when you create a non-clustered index, it an intermediate layer gets created in between these two. That is nothing okay. but this one. So what does this contains? So these are the virtual page files which contains the pointers to the data pages. Like uh, they are not arranged in ascending order. It is random. So okay. let's say you have 100 rows, uh, an okay. employee table where you have employee name, his salary. Okay, okay. Um, uh, his employee ID, employee name, salary. So ID will be the primary key. So on, on that mm -hmm. basis, clustered index will be created. So when it comes to non-clustered index for salary, what it does is like it will just say uh, it will create a uh, another uh, IAM page saying that for thousand because most of the queries whatever we are running for that particular application ask for salary is equal to thousand or salary is equal to four thousand. So what happens is it will create a page for thousand salary. Where exactly is that page? Where exactly is okay. that particular page? So the data okay. and the page number. So the value what okay. we are passing and the page number. Like that, it will say for 60,000, this is the page number. Exact location it will give. So these are the exact okay. locations which we are giving it. So that when you run okay. a query, so it will directly, if it is 9,000, it will just check in these particular pages first. If it is there, then it will directly go. It will not scan Both all the data okay. pages. But if it is not there okay. in this particular, then it will scan mm -hmm. with cluster index. So first will okay. be when you are scanning, it will be through non-clustered and then the cluster. Mm -hmm. cluster. So that is okay. how it happens. Okay. Got it right? Any uh, any yes. queries you have on this? Because uh, this is very like, important. Like whenever it, now the non-clustered index, uh, it searches for the value in the non-clustered index in the B3, right? Mm. Uh, but like if there would be an 
there is a chance like there, is, there will not be any reference in the class non class field for the data like if i have yeah, like 100 to well. 110 if it is like 100 to 10,000, so uh, is, is, is there any chance that if, there is no, if it is not like 900 to 1,000, you don't have any reference in the non cluster, then what does it do? So then you have to go with cluster index. Now that, that that's in the place where you uh, you fetch the cluster index. You don't. Uh, so here there is another concept called a hint. So okay. whenever SQL query runs, it uses the best mm -hmm. plan to do that. So if you want that particular query, whatever you are running, to enforce to use cluster index, then you use you use uh, uh, an option called hint. A hint, you have to give the cluster saying, use this clustered index for this particular query. But if you okay. don't use that hit, hint, then it will go through the normal procedure of querying the non-cluster. At first check the non-cluster. If it is not there, then go to cluster. You are getting what I am saying? Yeah, yeah, that is a good question yeah. actually. So if we have non 10 non-clusters uh, on top mm -hmm. of a clustered index, but I mm -hmm. I know that my query, uh, if I can use the clustered index instead of non-clustered index, uh, it will retrieve the data faster. So then what okay. should I do to enforce that it should use clustered index? Then you have to use okay. hint option. Okay. For that particular okay. query, saying that you use this cluster index, okay. that is there actually uh, in many of your performance tuning. Uh, I will be letting you, and not only that, uh, you can uh, enforce uh, the settings also, telling that uh, use max stop setting uh, to one or I mean use these many processes to run this particular query. You can enforce okay. the query to use that processes. That is also known as hint operation. Enforcing SQL to use uh, a set of processes to run that query. If it is very intensive uh, query, then you can tell SQL Server to use hint operation with max stop setting is equal to zero one. Like that. I'll let you know about max stop when we go to performance. Okay. okay. So that yeah. that you can do it. Hmm. I got it now. Got it right. So that's how it is. So this is all about the IAM page. IAM page is nothing but index allocation page, index allocation mapping, not page, uh, mapping page. So it's nothing but the virtual mapping, whatever we discussed, it will have those details in this particular page. That means this particular salary, uh, this for this particular value, this is the page number. For, for this value, this okay. is the page number. So that it will directly go to that. So uh, that is how it happens. Uh, and what else? Generally, I even have the pointer, right? Pointer yes. For the data. Yes. That, that's what M means mapping. Okay. okay, it points to the pages or whatever uh, it is defined, like this, the virtual pointing, whatever we are talking about. Okay. So, and now comes the. Uh, these are undocumented comments. You are aware of DBCBC comments, right? Little bit. Uh, Little bit. Yeah. yeah. So database consistency check comments. So in your SQL yeah. Server, uh, you can go through there are many DBCC comments like um, DBCC uh, input buffer, open tran. Uh, I'll go through that also. But uh, DBCC is like to, uh, it. It does on the database consistency check. Uh, most of the operations, okay. whatever you want to do at database level, you can use mm -hmm. these internal system commands. So DBCC in uh, if you this give this uh, particular command DBCC in the database name comma for that particular table comma minus one. Uh, this last op last option is for index. If you know the index name for which you wanted mm -hmm. to know the details of that index, you can give the index uh, name here. Otherwise, put minus one, it will give all the information. So this is the pretty much output for that. I will explain you what exactly is this. So uh, database name, you know, the table for which uh, you wanted to know the internals of the indexes. Minus one means mm -hmm. it will give all the details of all the indexes. Okay. Okay. It may be clustered and non-clustered, both of them. Yes. 
clustered, non-clustered, uh, whatever it, uh, you have, so those things. One second. My cursor is struck. Do I need to reset? Just give me a moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is moving now. Yeah. So, so as you can see, like these are the different uh, columns we have in this particular. Uh, so you don't need to by heart all these things. Uh, but the major things are like uh, IFI, um, IFID, the first uh, uh, first column. Yeah, so this is nothing but the number, file number of that particular page. So when you go to internals of the DBCC page, it will give you what mm -hmm. exactly the page contains. So at that time, it will okay. be, mostly it will be one only for, for page, okay. indicating that it is a page. So what is okay. the page ID? It is nothing but the page number, page number. So each page has some number. So in uh, so every page, it, it has the data, right? So it corresponds to yes. the page number. And IAM is nothing but the IAM page, what we are talking about. So you leave this. This one you you have to concentrate. Mm -hmm. This this yeah. this ID and this ID. Okay. okay. And the last row is nothing but page type. So these okay. this signifies significant. The significance is the number indicates what type of page it is. So okay. 10 means it is a IAM page, means uh, okay. for this particular, it's a non-cluster index you can read. So here, there is an IAM page, it can be clustered or non-clustered mostly, because IAM doesn't signify that only non-cluster should have, I IAM is it's basically uh, letting know the pointer, pointers kind of stuff. So all these are IAMs only, okay, all these okay. things. Okay. So, but this is this signifies the page. So we have around 17 page types. So the number can uh, go up till one yeah, to seven. Thing is, for the page type ten, uh, hmm. the IAM IAM ID is null. What does it mean? Yeah, I will let you know. So this is nothing but the default page, whatever we are talking about. So for the for, for any page type is equal to ten, it will be null. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that means one index is created and it is null. So for page type is equal to 10, it will show as null because it doesn't have any data. Do you think it has data? No. So it doesn't signify about any data, but it's an index page, signifying that it is an index page. So like that, if it is 1, then it is a data page. If it is a 2, then it's an index page. Index page means then you have to go into whether it's non clustered or non clustered. So here you can see there is one index for this particular table, 812. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, three indexes. Two is nothing but index pages. So these pages. And then all one is all are data pages here. And here you can see this IAM, the index allocation mapping. Uh, mm -hmm. See all these pages, whatever is there corresponds to this particular IAM only, means they are into a single allocation, single allocation, you can say, uh, means uh, this IAM is taking care of all these particular page pointings. Okay. Okay. So this column, this one and uh, this page type. So we have 17 page types, one to, uh, 1 to 17, data page we have for 1, index page for 2, 10 is for mm -hmm. IAM page and uh, I yeah. can tell you some other pages like uh, boot page is there, some 15 like that, we hardly use it. But uh, bulk change mm -hmm. map page will be there, 17. So if you are doing any bulk operation by putting the recovery in bulk recovery and try to do those things, mm -hmm. then it will be in bulk lock. Uh, you have to, it will automatically give you 17. Okay, like that. Uh, if suppose the page is totally free, then it will mm -hmm. give you like it's a free page 11. Okay. So those are not required. Actually, this much details is also not required for you. But I'm just giving you. So in case if somebody asks, you can say the uh, VCC end will give you the details about the uh, table, uh, the index uh, structure within that particular table. Uh, we have uh, different uh, uh, page types in that particular 
table which signifies uh, what type of page it is. Uh, generally for IAM mm -hmm. page it is uh, this much, uh, 10. If it is a data mm -hmm. page it should be uh, 1 and index page it should be 2. So that should be a, 1, 2, 10 if you know that is enough. So mostly the, uh, everything goes with this only. And other things is partitioning number, this comes when uh, you partition the data uh, into files, file groups and what is this object ID? It is nothing but your table name. Inside the SQL Server, okay. the table name is uh, uh, stored uh, with a particular object, it is given some particular object ID. So how do you do this? You can simply say select uh, object underscore name of this object ID. If you type this, it will give you the table name, this object ID. Okay. Like that, okay. if you give object underscore ID, ID, uh, ID, then give the name, it will give you the object ID for that particular table name. So like okay. that. So inside the database, it is stored as object ID. Object can be anything. Yes. Table, procedure, views, uh, index, whatever it is. Yeah, all are objects. Everything is object in SQL Server. Understanding, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is about the DBCC index. Yeah, let's go to the DBCC page. So as this nobody uses, it's like uh, when uh, things get escalated to Microsoft, then only we use this, otherwise we don't use this. But still I'm telling you. So the, what does it do is like uh, TBCC page, uh, these are the options we have. You have to give the database name, the file number at all, right? It will be one, whatever this one. Okay. File number, one. Uh, page number, so this is nothing but the page number. Give some, uh, some page file number, then okay, you can leave this option. So three means it will give you all the data. It, whenever there is an okay. option called one, two, three, four, if you give the largest number, it will give you all data. So I'll give you an example how it looks. So this is the output of the DBCC page. Okay. So as I was telling you, we have the page header, body, offset, right? Yes. I will show you this here. See. So this is first one is about the buffer. Buffer means every page is located in mem memory, right? So whenever any transaction okay. happens, first the page is loaded in buffer. So this particular header gives you information about where it is stored. So okay. understanding these things are complex. Even uh, myself don't know much because these are all hexadecimal. That means internally okay. it is stored in AWE. Um, kind of stuff. So the memory readings, addressing kind of stuff. So this talks about the buffer, where exactly the page is located. But uh, actually you can go through these numbers here. See, when it is starting and what is the page number. See, uh, what is it? one second. Okay. So the start page. So with this number you can at least in case of troubleshooting, you can see that what is this number, is it more or less and then we can see uh, is it memory exceeding or sometimes when memory runs out error, it doesn't give any data here. So with that you can actually find out okay there is something wrong with memory leaks or something like that. But this doesn't signify much, it just tells you where that particular page is in, uh, in RAM. Okay, and you can see here page number. So the same thing whatever uh, you have given in the command, page number, right? So 1 is to 241 means first uh, fi page file is to page number. It is a 241 page, page you are referring to. Yeah, page okay. record. So 241 page you are referring to now, whatever we are studying here. Mm -hmm. So page header. So this is a, the page header starting with this particular address in memory and it's again 1 is to 241 and here what is that the thing you have to see is m underscore free send. This is important here. So what is the number it is there? 8055. That means out of uh, 8096, sorry, 8196, this much data is free. So this is an important uh, section where it will help you. 8055 means 
How much is free? A zero five mm. Lot of almost uh, whole page is free. Lot of so whole page is free. Yeah. So that is means uh, the how many records are there? I'll tell you. But uh, it's like very uh, maybe only one column or two columns like that. So yeah. it is just hardly using bytes. Some I think fifty bytes or something. So eight one nine six minus. Uh, where is that? Eight eight five five. Ah, eight zero five five. Eight one nine six minus eight zero five five means uh, around one thirty bytes, something like that. Okay. Yeah. So and yeah. in that ninety six is used by your header. So hardly it will be uh, means eight zero nine zero. Forty bytes. Forty bytes. Forty bytes. Is used by this particular uh, uh, row. Means yeah. the row, okay. the row of the table is using only that forty five bytes. Uh, okay. If you say car n car thousand, then definitely it will show. I mean, some lesser number. So that means I can predict it is just uh, some int or something like that. Okay. Okay. So that is about that, and then let's go to the next data page. Uh, how can we find how many uh, rows are there in the yeah. data? Store? Yes, I'll tell you. So these two are there, right? So here you have only one row. And the row is, and the row data is this one. A A A A A. So there is only one column, and only one row, and that row is this. Mm -hmm. This is the data. So you can check it out okay. if you want. You create a small table. I'll anyhow show you. But if you just create no, a small like, table, is there any chance that I can find here in the index? Yeah, that or, is what I'm saying. Uh, this the is data. the data only. This is the data only. Okay. This A A A A is nothing but. They have created mm -hmm. some junk, uh, uh, some t uh, some database, test database, mm -hmm. and one table name. Mm -hmm. Inside that, there is only one column, and inside that mm -hmm. column, this is the row. The data itself is it is known as a. Generally, we write some name, right? Some John yeah. or something. Instead of John, it, it is, is this like one. Department one is the column. Oh yeah, I think right, right. Department ah, correct. correct. Department, column. yeah, I could not. So department one, A, and I think Chennai is also there. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So it should be three, right. three rows, yes. three rows. Yeah, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. So actually, they have cut it short. But for each row, you will have almost uh, a page of data, signifying where exactly okay. is located. So this is cut mm -hmm. short, but uh, it will be department zero one, and then you will have a full page uh, data like this particular hexadecimal. And then it okay. comes A A A, and then again this thing, and then again comes okay. this, again this thing, and okay. so that is how it signifies. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have one row with these three columns. Mm -hmm. So this is what yeah. I can predict from this. And how do you say one row? See here, row offset. Did you check this? Okay. You have only one row here. So mm -hmm. so one row, and it is pointing to. This particular section, which has three columns, uh, department, okay. some A name, Chennai. Chennai. That particular person belong to this department and to Chennai. So this is actually straightforward. But when you really type in, this data page covers almost a page or two pages for a single line, single row. Okay. okay. So this is a consolidated one. But for each thing, it will be a very big uh, thing. Okay, okay. understanding, right? So in a okay. page, you should look into which page you are looking number, at. What is the free space we have? Page number, free space. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and then here uh, you can predict also. If suppose someone does something and you want to know what data, and but you exactly mm -hmm. know don't know. You just know only table name, but they encrypted something. So that you are not able to see the data. So this is how encryption can be done. Actually, you don't know, you don't have access to the data inside the table. They encrypt that, but you can read the data okay. by using this DBCC page. Okay. Got it. So it will give you yeah, full yeah. data actually. <laughs> so this is how the DBCC page is. Okay. Yeah, I think. Uh, but, uh, So these are the I different DCC pages. DCC page is not officially on the document, right? Yes, it's undocumented. Both are undocumented. Okay. This one and this one. Okay. 
okay so i will send you notes also and this like so that you can uh, in google you can search it but i just uh, okay so this is all about indexes and uh, in indexes also one more thing mm -hmm. so while performance tuning i mean there will be a one question uh, here okay. in non clustered index so people will ask like uh, generally when you create uh, so many non clustered index it will hit the performance so can you explain how it hits is it can be one of the question you have idea how to answer that uh, i hate this question but i don't probably know the yeah. answer about yeah so yes yes so what happens here is see uh, now you know these are the uh, uh, virtual pointer pages right so where you will say this is the value and this is the page where exactly the data is stored now let's say there are uh, like uh, 10 indexes which got created mm -hmm. so that means there will be lot of this kind of pointings right mm -hmm. so one will be for name one will let's say for name i have created index for salary mm -hmm. i have created index uh, for uh, some uh, last name i have created index non clustered index basically mm -hmm. then it will say yeah. uh, first name uh, let's say john this is the page mm -hmm. it is going salary 10000 means this is the page and uh, again uh, not say department this is the page it is going so those kind of combinations it can have here it is not that it should be in a ascending order so what happens okay. is the issue comes in when there are lots of insertions and deletions happening on this uh, on this particular table okay. so mm -hmm. what will happen then these things will get disturbed that why it will get disturbed can you justify that why because the allocation uh, mapping will get disturbed because in non clustered index the arrangements are like not done after like, uh, the the fragmentation goes on because the Correct. space which is deleted will be stayed like yeah. long away so it yeah, gets yeah. ex it gets extended every time correct so that means john i gave like it is 100 100 is the uh, 100th page i said and then mm -hmm. for salary uh, 10000 i said 400 so when there are lot mm -hmm. of insertions happening what will happen is that john will not stay in 100 page now yeah and at the same time salary will not stay in that 400 page. why 400. because when you insert lot of data the uh, the it's it's always possible that the pages and all will get rearranged as per the and when you delete lot of the data it will probably come instead of 100 it will be some 50 actual position but we are saying it is 100 so what does the system do it will go to 100 and it will check everything and then opt for clustered that means it is yeah. doing two way routing it is not getting the single path so that is yeah. where uh, this index is. so in that cases what you have to do is the best practice is whenever there are lot of insertions and deletions happening you should ensure that you update the statistics so that is how the statistics rebuilding the index yeah so it will re, re it will what does that update stats do it will tell the iam mapping saying that boss this is not 9 uh, this is not 100 now it is 90 so oh. it will refresh those pages with the status correct statistics index rebuilding right in the process of yeah. index rebuilding the stats. yes no. so what is then update stats do uh, like it uh, generally like updates the whole way the row actually is like this kind of stuff so it is basically the uh, like statistics only so it will tell actually it will give a significance uh, like okay. uh, have you heard about sampling for population sampling and all so how do we say like uh, uh, there is a, uh, when uh, the uh, what do you say the male population is more compared to female population so what we what these guys will do is like they will go to the uh, Uh, I mean, the most populated area, and then collect the samplings, and they say, right, uh, this is how it's happening. I mean, based on that, but it's not an exact uh, figure which they are telling. It yes. could be wrong, yes. but depending upon the huge data and all, we will say, like, okay, this is uh, this is how it could be approximate data. So same thing happens in clustered also. It will say that there's lot of things are happening, but this is the sampling of data. 
which we can give. So yeah. it is always mandated that you rebuild and then update stats. Okay. Okay. It's, it's nothing but okay. stat. We will go in depth anyhow in performance. But I am saying that since this issue has happened, they will ask you uh, why okay. non why we should maintain non clustered and if there are non more many non clustered index, what are the risks uh, dealing with that? Okay. okay. So you can take any live example and uh, give that. Okay. So we have around 17 index pages and uh, different types mm -hmm. of indexes we have. So I will not go in depth in that. They will not ask you much. Uh, probably they will ask full text indexes. This is for searching and all, uh, which Windows uses. Okay. Windows search machine okay. uses. So mm -hmm. all are like, uh, even I am also not aware much, but these are the three most important. Okay. Probably we use most clustered and non-clustered, I think so. Yeah, clustered, non-clustered, and full text is for our uh, searching thing. Search. Okay. And what is Unix Unix index? Oh, do we use Unix index much? Which one? Unix index. Yeah. So this is another uh, complex. Uh, what do you say? Whenever uh, you have a table uh, where the data, uh, you know the. Unique ID and prime difference between the unique ID and primary primary ID. Yes, yes, yes. What's primary the difference? Primary key and unique key, right? Uh, primary yeah. and unique key, right? Uh, yeah. Primary key doesn't accept any like null values yeah. or anything, but unique key accepts. One null value. So in those yeah. in those scenarios, you use this particular index. But I really don't see this benefit in a real time environment. Why people have one only one null value and they wanted to use, uh, so I hardly yeah, yeah. seen this in a real time. Yeah, but you can expect. So this spatial index is specially for um, this uh, geographic. Like in Max, we have this uh, coordination, right? Zero one one zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, Finding in that fashion. kind of uh, yeah, in in that kind of tabular uh, structuring, we use the spatial indexes. So we have a geometry data type, uh, which is specially for this kind of uh, structuring. It's a data type, geometry data type, which got yeah. introduced from 2008, I think. So that is specially for this kind of uh, things. For that kind, we use the spatial index. Okay. Okay. Yeah, not much required, but I just uh, wrote for your information. Okay, so this is pretty much on uh, these lines. Uh, so we can quickly go through those, uh, what do you say, backup uh, and uh, recovery models, which should be a very simple topic yeah. for you. But I will just cover whatever the questions they can ask. Okay. Uh, what's happening? One second now. Let me check if. Okay, well, what are the different recovery models we have? Uh, full recovery, log recovery, and uh, mostly we have use full recovery, right? Full yeah. recovery, right? So we have a simple, simple full and log full recovery, bulk log. Okay. So these are the three recovery models we have. Uh, you have yeah. heard about checkpointing? Hmm? Checkpointing. Checkpointing? Yeah, Checkpoint. Uh, time of pointing, like uh, like each time or uh, using the log recovery, we use this bulk log recovery. Uh, so I will talk about the checkpointing also at this point, and then we will cover about uh, high-level backup. Okay, I think uh, I we have like full backup time restorations. Yeah, checkpoint that and then do it. So I will ask questions on this uh, interview questions for these things. Some of the yeah. main things okay. which can. So so simple. Let's go at high level. So what are the what is this recovery model and what are the different types we have? So we have these three types, one is simple, full, and simple, bulk log recovery. So what is this recovery model then? What is the significance? Why do we have these three types of recovery models? So it signifies yeah, the point in time recovery. Yeah. 
whenever the disaster occurs, like uh, if you want to reconstruct your database, we we use this three type of uh, uh, depending on the requirement, we use these three kind of recovery models. Correct. So simple as the name indicates, uh, the there will be no point in time recovery for this uh, recovery model. Uh, when you go to full, yes. it will be like a we full point in time. Yes. Yeah. And what is the difference? So this is the interview. What is the difference between full and bulk clock? Full and bulk clock. In full recovery model, the whole data as well as the log files are recovered. Whereas in bulk log, just the log files are recovered by which uh, we received the data. Sorry? Recover the data. Come again? Full the data and the log files are back up Correct. to the particular okay. point. But uh -huh. Whereas in bulk log, the log files are recovered and then by that we re-restore the whole database to the point. The, uh, that means the log file is not backed up? Log file is also backed up. In bulk log, the log file is first like uh, restored for the uh, at point of time where the disaster has occurred. From then we uh, like restore whole full database for full. Uh, no, actually, so for there bulk. is a slight difference between full okay. and bulk log. Uh, I will let you know. So both are almost same only. There is no difference in those yeah. things. But uh, let's go from simple. Uh, and the other thing what we have to understand is about checkpointing here. Checkpointing and okay. transaction log architecture. If you can understand yeah. these two things, it will be very easy to handle these four, these six topics, whatever we have found out. Okay. So how, so as you know, the database uh, physically is stored into data files and log files. So yes. what will be stored in data file, what will be stored in log file. So in data file, it is nothing but the actual data, whatever you are committing Com and checkpoint. Yes. Whatever we do, the transaction will be stored in the data. Whatever the data which is committed and checkpointed is stored in data file. Okay. Okay. That means mostly the checkpointed. So if you run a particular command, and then uh, you don't explicitly do commit. So, yeah. um, okay, before going that, probably I will explain this way so that, so I will explain log file then. So what happens inside log file is, so you can read log file also. This is another DBCC, um, I don't know, what do you say, undocumented uh, command. I'll let you know how to read the log okay. file, similar to the DBCC page. So okay. inside log, what will happen is, Whenever you are running any commands, any transactions, each and everything is recorded in this log file. So the log file purpose is to track each and everything to ensure that if something goes wrong, we will be able to restore from this particular log file. So that is the purpose yes. of log recording. So log what will happen inside is you have a lessons inside the uh, log. What is a lesson? It is the log sequence number. Yes. Lesson. So these are nothing but the sequence numbers. So specially you will hear this word when you work on log shipping. So in log yes. shipping you do the log shipping and in breaks uh, in it breaks somewhere in middle and if you want to restore it. Yes. So it's based on uh, the, yeah a lesson it will tell you uh, the sequence of uh, the sequence of operations you are doing. Yeah, sequence of operations you are doing. First, let's say in a particular table you have uh, a salary component, salary column, where it is 1000. Now I am updating it to 2000. So what is first operation? First you are selecting yeah, that like and then you are uh, updating it, right? So select will be, yeah. So select will be the first, uh, select will be in first order and then the update. So it will be update signified with some identity number like of sub. So to signify the lower one will be the first operation and then the first higher one. So like that inside it will be had. So and there are three important uh, sections in log file. One is begin, commit, checkpoint. Okay. So first is LSN column. So I am just giving a brief. It's not exactly it is but for understand. Commit. Okay and 
check pointing okay okay you should always whenever log file comes means this particular picture should be there in your mind first will be the lsn number which will signify what operation is in order begin commit check pointing happens here okay so whenever a transaction starts let's say salary components we have started uh, salary we are updating so it will say oh, it will signify with some number we'll say once again whatever that means uh, we will write begin select star from salary something will write right then what it will do is yeah. it check it will mark this saying that okay begin has uh, when the, uh, the operation has okay. begin yeah. so then what you do the same salary what you will do uh, you will update that and say and that's all that means it will inside it will mark it as commit okay this transaction has executed so you, you click on okay. that run button so that means it is okay. executed then what happens mm -hmm. internally once it is executed it is executed but okay. let's say if disaster happens now you cannot recover this particular point until it is checkpoint and yeah. checkpointing okay. is nothing but writing this update statement in data file okay yeah. writing to data file mm -hmm. is checkpointing okay. internally exact meaning is this one means whenever you are doing some operation just it will be in memory you will get that particular query get this particular query you do some operations you execute it but ultimately execution is not the one we uh, we wanted once it gets it written into that. the data file that means it is permanent in the table no one can break it that okay. is checkpoint understood so until the data is in log file it doesn't mean that uh, we have the data in log we will be able to restore no in the log it's file whenever it says like it is checkpointed it will mark that checkpointed actually it will say okay for this operation the number whatever is there right this lsn number it is a begin 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 then lsn number same number commit commit same number check pointed and that means that particular transaction if anything and it is in full recovery mode you can restore it okay. to that point in time point in time means up till the last check point whatever you have done to that point you can restore you are getting it right yeah i got it any questions so this is very important topic actually checkpointing most of the people will get confused what is checkpointing what is checkpointing but this exactly is nothing but you are writing that particular uh, operation committing that particular operations into mdf file data file that is known as checkpointing okay is, is it any mod it modification in that or everything when it is checkpointed then it is written to the data file yes if it is in still commit mode no nothing will happen means you can you cannot do point in time recovery because when you recycle a sql everything will be washed off log file okay, okay. Yes. so that is how okay now come let's But go to simple how, uh, i one. got a question i yeah. got a question whenever i do like uh, i just commit the transaction and the transaction is completed but how mm. do i know that it is check pointer or written to the data file yeah Okay, so, it. yeah, you you can confirm it using uh, yeah one method. It's very simple, or not that. So, when you in the log, you cannot read the log file. But what happens is like when you run any command, you can do an explicit commit. Okay. That means explicit checkpointing. That is one method. Uh, okay. Or else, second will be the system will do auto checkpointing. every second it does auto checkpointing uh, that's what when uh, when you run that particular command right it's in fraction of seconds it will go and write in the table but how do you say that if it is in full recovery mode the system will automatically write it to the uh, data file so uh, i'll let you know about simple what happened then you will understand when it is doing checkpoint so it is not our job but you can explicitly uh, do that using Uh, explicit commit okay. it is not our job to do the checkpoint it is system's job so what are the different uh, cases where you can do 
explicit checkpointing i can tell you like when you recycle the sequel then it will it will first what it will do at what point this uh, commit transactions has happened it will automatically do the checkpointing when you recycle that it will take some time why because it will check in the log files what are the different lsn numbers which went up till commit which are marked for commit and then it will auto checkpoint it and then only it will recycle that means it is auto saving it and then it will recycle and whenever uh, if you want to do any explicit checkpointing you have to explicitly commit it saying that commit this begin begin tran end tran commit it otherwise what will happen is system will take its own uh, time to do that um, that i will tell you how to do that in simple recovery what will happen is whenever the log reaches 70% of that particular file the system will start doing the auto checkpointing okay it happens in simple recovery so usually okay. uh, when you put any database in simple recovery uh, whenever the log file reaches 70% it will do auto checkpointing but let's say it is 40% it will not do so it reaches 70% then it does auto checkpointing that's where you have risk whenever something goes okay. wrong you will not be able to get to the point where it was there so you okay. cannot get it actually it will show but you cannot get it some of the data is still not committed to the data file okay. but if you are able to query that particular table then it is fine okay. if you are able to select a query and run it because it gets the data from data of data file only so this you can actually visualize it when you are running a very huge query which takes hours together to your run. voice is breaking uh, once again let me adjust my head more hello how about now hello yes okay. is, is it fine now rajendra yeah it's fine okay so auto checkpointing is not done by us. so it is done by the system also in simple if it reaches 70 percent it does the auto checkpointing so this yeah, simulation you can do yeah. only yeah so this kind of simulation whatever you ask you can do you can check it only when you are running very huge query which takes about one hour to run then at that time uh, you wanted to know up till what percentage it is checkpointed okay mm -hmm. so so in that situation only you can actually visualize it when it goes down then we have this t log file which will tell you up till what point it is checkpointed but in simple there is no other way to let you know up till what point it is checkpointed but in full recovery you can tell why because you are taking t logs every 5 minutes or 2 minutes whatever is there all the checkpointed things it will store it in the physical file so that if something goes wrong you can restore up till that particular point okay got it right so but yeah. this but there are other there are ways to do the explicit checkpoint i re even recycle it you can take the backup to do the checkpointing you can mm -hmm. uh, do explicit checkpointing through commands uh, those kind of if you do any rearrangement or rebuild or something then also checkpointing happens so those things okay. Okay. So in full recovery mode, it's the same thing. So in what happens in full recovery is if you set the T log to run every five minutes, there will be T log job you have to create for this full recovery. Otherwise, log file will become full. What happens in full is it will actually doesn't truncate this checkpointing things, which happens in simple. So whenever it reaches 70 percentage, it checkpoints and then it uh, sorry it truncates these checkpointed things in simple recovery. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay well, in simple recovery the it, otherwise if you don't truncate the checkpointing data the log keeps on growing so yeah sorry, log increased log, yeah. yeah so it is 70% when it reaches then it truncates the log actually it's not uh, checkpointing okay. so checkpointing is done by system the 70% is when uh, 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 for simple uh, when it reaches 70 when the log log file is 70% full then it truncates the checkpointing so okay. if truncation doesn't happen what will happen the log file will keep on growing and it will eat up a whole your disk yeah correct so what happens in full is it will take the 
backup of those checkpointings every 5 minutes or 10 minutes uh, whatever time you have scheduled that backup job t log yeah. backup job okay so what's the difference between full and bulk is in bulk log preparation especially it is used for bulk operations uh, we put it in bulk log uh, recovery mode and then especially for bulk log uh, intensive operated operations related uh, queries or database when the database is intended to do all the bulk operations like at a time uh, hundred to two I mean thousands not even hundreds uh, thousands or ten thousands of data is inserted and that data is deleted or updated whatever it is at that time in the log file what happens is for all those ten thousand or uh, one lakh records which the same operations there will be only one LSN which is written there not these ten thousand rows Okay. So then, what will happen during uh, um, um, some disaster? Just you will one be you can recover everything. Yes, that is one point, and there is a drawback also. If that particular operation is in middle of doing the transaction, like inserting ten thousand, it is in middle of fifty thousand, and a disaster okay. happens, then mm -hmm. home is lost. Fifty thousand records data is lost. Because we are not recording okay. all the data, we are just writing only one LSN for all that 10,000. Getting? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that okay. is the importance of bulk log. Only one LSN is written for all bulk operations. So if in but case like if, if, if if this is a situation like if I have 50,000 records and just I have 10,000 records entered in that, then a disaster occurs. So again, I need Gone. to recall all the 10,000. Correct. Correct. If disaster happens, disaster you will not be able to. Yeah, but in full recovery, you will be able to. Why? Because for all because these ten thousand, you has, have the entries. Yes. Every uh, record has its LSN. So correct. It is similar to the bulk and truncate operation also. Like you have the bulk delete operation and truncate operation, right? You know about that, right? Yes. So delete, yes. Uh, yes. delete table, table name, uh, and truncate table. So what does this delete yeah. table do? Is it will actually delete yeah. row by row, row by row. But row truncate row. is yes. just one LSN remove. Yes. That's all. Yes. Yes. At a time. So it's similar to yeah. that. So, uh, so what are the other? So this is one of the core question they will ask. What is full and checkpointing? Also, when does system do uh, checkpointing? And when does? Uh, how do you maintain the log file? Uh, log file in uh, recovery model. So in full recovery, if you don't have the T log, then what will happen? Mm -hmm. uh, so it is mandatory that for full recovery and bulk log recovery, you need to set up T log backup. Backup. Yeah. If you don't have the T log backup, your log file will grow, and it will end up recycling. I mean, end up whole SQL Server down. And okay. SQL Server down in real time scenario is a priority one issue. I have faced a couple of issues in our environment. Mostly, I mean, whenever we do any new installation, we happen to put it in simple, but we forgot to create T log. That's all. It grows okay. like anything. Yeah, okay. so there are a lot of escalations. Uh, like, it's like when I, it is in simple mode, uh, mm -hmm. the T logs will be like uh, are backed up automatically after seventy percent, or you need to put any like do you need to specify? No, no, the there, there will be no T logs. There will be no T log. System will do the auto checkpointing, and system will automatically remove the checkpoint and things. Because here we don't need uh, any point in time recovery. So whatever the data is checkpointed in MDF file, up till that only. That means whenever you take the backup, right? Yeah. So let's say the database is in simple recovery mode now. Okay. okay. Uh, daily like what, you are doing. Whatever, whatever the scenario you just use that. Like whenever you are updating the SQL Server or something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, if it is in simple recovery mode, like. Uh, simple recovery mode or fast, uh, like full recovery mode or bug log recovery mode. Uh, what actually makes it to uh, like what actually makes the server down? Yeah, in what scenario server makes down, right? So mostly yeah. full and bulk log, it will uh, hit uh, the log file. If you don't create T log file, 
it will make mm -hmm. uh, your server go down so better so in what situations you have to use what recovery model should be an ideal question so if that particular database is very critical and ensure that it should have a point in time recovery then put it in full or bulk based on if it is having bulk operations or general and then create a t-log if you don't create a t-log that's all gone if the database is not uh, I mean critical but uh, uh, and the updations are not happening much like OLAP kind of stuff you can put it in simple recovery OLAP means it's all used for reporting, reporting. means we will fetch data uh, we will just fetch the data I mean yeah. there will be no updates happening on that frequently that means if yeah. you take backup on a daily basis that would suffice if something goes wrong it is the daily backup only you can recover you cannot uh, restore point in time because you don't have backups if really you need to have point in time recovery for simple take full backup every one hour or every five minutes like that so that's the only solution yeah. otherwise pull it, put it in full recovery okay what generally does like uh, where I have seen like they don't have like check pointers or like uh, T logs already set up because like when daily users they don't even set up the T logs or full recovery. What has happened when yes, gone. this time kind of gone. you know? It is gone. So you will have to take the full backup every half an hour or every one hour like that. It depends yeah. upon your RPO and RPO. So there are two things here. One is recovery time objective, recovery point objective. So recovery okay. point is up till what point you wanted to recover. That means okay. on a daily basis some of the ha transaction happens, right? So if disaster yeah. happens, uh, I mean what delay is fine with you? Is it like uh, 10 minutes uh, of, uh, far ahead data is fine for you? or do you need full point in time recovery so now it's around let's say 11 pm for me and now my database has crashed so up till what point you can recover data is it 10:59 or 10:55 or is it 9 pm so that is known as your recovery point it is 1 hour 2 hours 30 minutes 15 minutes the less the recovery point is uh, you are uh, you are maintaining a high recovery mode. It should be either full. But if it is simple, then it depends upon uh, what kind of backup. Like when you are taking the full backup. So ideally, full backup no one will take uh, every five minutes or ten minutes. That's why we have, we will set T log. But taking T log, you when, need to put where it. I did is like they take as uh, every day back full backups. Like yes, differential yes. backups is for every one hour, but like it is a very small database. So they take uh, every day log back, uh, like backups, full backups. But like whenever this actually happens, then what what the scenario gone. actually does like gone? It's gone, gone. So you can only restore when it is in simple recovery. You can only restore with the latest full backup you have taken. That's all. Okay. There is no other question. All the data is locked. Okay. That's what we will put in simple recovery uh, for the databases where there will be very less transactions happening. Okay. Okay. Okay, I got it. So if there are many transactions happening, then put it in full recovery and take T log backup. Okay. So that is the RPO which you have to define your system. These are like business terms. RPO means recovery point object. And uh, recovery okay. uh, time objective is nothing but what is the time you will take to uh, let's say 11 pm disaster happen what is the time okay. time you are taking to bring back the services up and running intact is it uh, in within 10 minutes you are bringing the service is it one hour mm -hmm. so that kind of mm -hmm. thing means how okay. quick you are doing these restorations and bringing the database up yeah. you are getting right rpo and rpo Okay. Yeah. Recovery time objective recovery and point. recovery point up till what point you can restore and up till yeah. uh, how much time you will take to restore. Okay. Yeah, those things are uh, RPO and RTO. So that's about and backup, full backup. So backups we have full differential and T log. Full differential so, T log backups. Yeah. Full backup means you know, right? Full uh, data file the backup. Some data files, yes. Yeah. Differential yeah, backup so is like when from the full backup to the next level, we take differential backup, log backup, log back, log 
log pi and log t back up is done sequentially so t1 t2 t3 so 10 to 10 15 means next will be 10 15 to 10 30 and next will be having the data from 10 30 to 10 40 so if you find any t log missing in between that's all you cannot do point in time you can do only up till that missed point yeah okay so we will see like how to restore uh, those t logs when disaster happens and up till how to restore point so here one question will be in backup is uh, uh, I uh, let's say my database I am backing up the database on a daily basis uh, oh. Sunday to Saturday every day at uh, uh, 2 2 a.m. Uh, 2 a.m. it's night time okay. why during night time because p uh, users will not be much no and there will be less business impact yeah. so every day I am doing uh, backup at 2 a.m. and then okay. I have a differential backup at every uh, one hour. Okay. Okay. And then T log backups every fifteen minutes. Okay. So then he will ask question how my database gets corrupted. Every fifteen minutes is a T log. My database gets corrupted on a on Wednesday uh, four twenty. Four twenty PM. Four twenty PM IST or PST, whatever it is. So now what is the sequence you will restore? Till then, for uh, like 4:15. And now you tell me the restoration sequence. How do you restore the databases? Which backup you will restore, okay. and what what backup you will apply? 4:20 yeah, p.m. got passed. Okay, I try to recover first full backup till. Which full like backup? I uh, so. Is it Sunday full when backup? So my database crashed on Wednesday 4:20 p.m. Okay, Wednesday 4:20. Like I do it like full backup till Tuesday. Uh, uh, Tuesday f like Tuesday 2 p 2 a.m. and then 2 a.m. to like 4:20, uh, 4 4 o'clock or 4. Every one hour I have differential backup, so I'll do the differential backup till 4. Then I'll do till 15 minutes, like 4:15, 4 to 4:15 the transaction log. Transaction log. Uh, after that, uh, because we uh, the five minutes may be missing. Like I can do it for till the point time, right? You can do that. That's what I'm saying. So, what is that option you have? Using checkpoint. Which one? Using checkpoint when I do the full backup. No. Think about. So there is an option called no truncate. So this is a famous interview question. Okay. Okay. No truncate. So no. So what will happen is. Uh, how, so what is the sequence you will apply the log files? You will restore four. Um, uh, four. Four fifteen. Four, four, four fifteen. Four, 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 420 four crash. Four so up till 4 yeah. p.m. you rest. Uh, so for 2 a.m. full backup. Yeah. So 2 a.m. you restore the full backup, and up till uh, that every one hour, whatever four. the uh, differential backups, like almost how many? Backups. From 18 or 20 four backups. Differential you apply. Yeah. Four differential yeah. backups you apply, and then you apply the T log, the subsequent T log. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then what you have to do is you have to run this command backup log, okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to disk is equal to means you should explicitly take the log backup. So this will occur when your SQL server is available. So what happens is two conditions. One is totally SQL server gets crashed and you wanted to build a new server and then uh, get all your application running on that. And other scenario is uh, SQL gets corrupted. Okay. But all the resources are available, like disks are available, everything is available. So at that time, you have to run this command to explicitly take the log backup. So whatever the remaining logs which are still not checkpointed now, that from 15 mm -hmm. to 2, 20. So it 20. is still there in log file. Okay. So this, this data is still there in the uh, log file. Okay. Which okay. is they still not checkpointed. Yeah. 
then you should explicitly do this command say backup log, uh, log uh, this database name to disk is equal to some disk number you give so that it explicitly does the checkpoint is and save this log in this particular location and then you restore this particular log file to do the point in time recovery otherwise that 5 minutes whatever is there is lost lost okay what about like this is when not, i have uh, when i have like server whole server class then i only can uh, recover at the time no option. no option no option no. that's what only i'm saying so this this option is available when you are uh, all the disk uh, the log files everything is intact it's nothing but it's some glitch happened some let's say some high voltage came and then whole your servers gets uh, what do you say it got uh, some some glitch happened and then it screwed up something now you wanted yes. to restore that so you have to say backup log some database name to disk is equal to I'll give e drive something uh, just to some location and then say uh, t log underscore something mm -hmm. okay with no truncate so this is the option here. So what it will do? It for this particular database, it will explicitly uh, get the checkpointing done and save it in this particular location. Okay. Okay. And then once this is done, now whatever the restore option you are doing, right? And you have to restore with no recovery. And this no. this particular file should be with recover. You you heard about no recovery and recovery? No, right? Uh, yeah. 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 So for no this kind like of thing, whenever you, when it is still waiting to, yeah. So restore is nothing but uh, whenever a backup is taken, we generally do the restore command. That means Based fully the database details are applied and committed on the uh, data file. But Server. what happens yeah. to no recovery means it is still open. <coughs> means open, you are yeah. still not making. It is still read only only. Yes. So, so not even read only. It's it is not still a completely uh, set up. Yeah, can, it's completely it's not set up. fully completed. Yeah. Correct. It is not fully. So, so those kind of things. Okay. So that yeah. happens. So at the last file, you should do it with recovery. Okay. Got it. Yeah, yeah, so I think uh, that's the pretty much, uh, that is one of the, and the other question also there will be there, but this is related to log shipping. So uh, now uh, you should tell me this is the last question and then we'll wind it off. This is another interview question. Okay. So same scenario every day, every day 2 a.m. full backup for, uh, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, every one hour differential and then uh, every 15 minutes I'll try. Every 15 minutes what happens is uh, now my database crashes and okay. I don't have, uh, sorry, it crashes at let's say 4.45, not okay. 4.20, but uh, 4, okay. 4.40 let's say. Okay. Okay, it crashes at 4.40. Uh, I'm just thinking what is the question. Uh, this is a very, uh, I only asked a couple of times. Uh, let's say my, uh, somehow my full backup, whatever is there at uh, 2 a.m. Wednesday got corrupted. Somebody deleted accidentally. Okay. What you will do now? Will you be able to do point in time recovery? Uh, you are it, getting right? It, it, yeah, I got it. But if the full recovery is stored in only one place where it got deleted, there, is, there may not one be a chance to recover. No, no, you can yeah. still recover. That's what I'm saying. Only one place I'm recovering, no no backups to that, again backups. So at 2 a.m. It, it got deleted. Can you do point in time recovery? Yes, we can still do. What are the options we have? Okay. So we have Tuesday's full backup yes. and we have the differential backups, we have the T logs, yes. using that yes. you can do it. Same procedure. Okay, if the but, full, okay, the full yes. backup is gone, we even have the differential and... Uh, yeah, I don't write, every day I am taking the backup. 
yes, so yes, yes. kind of questions they will ask so no full backup means we'll just think only for that particular day but ideally in general real time scenarios we will maintain at least a minimum of four to five uh, earlier backups why earlier backup. this kind of scenarios only okay okay and also we do the tape backups of the backups which we have taken also that kind of things are also there in microsoft we do that uh, apart from dot bak files which we take uh, using commands we back up the mm -hmm. whole disk to a tape so okay. that uh, if something uh, totally goes down with the disk we will be able to restore we call it as dpm backups okay. in microsoft so that happens in okay. real time you'll get to know so those things okay 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 yes okay. generally cool. they, then, in wherever they take only backups in san mm -hmm. and as, otherwise like they have some database separately in like some location they just back up there so they have two places in the backup okay but only they maintain single backup no uh, the, they maintain two backup like san yeah. like, internet they have one and uh, they have other servers outside so they move on daily basis no what i'm telling you're telling about two different locations i'm telling uh, days within days how many days backup they will have only one day backup or like wednesday tuesday also they will have they will have or they will two or three days oh okay okay so the uh, the daily backup is moved to some other location you meant to say and then in the other yeah. location it will maintain all the backup files all the back all the backup files like for okay. three or four months i think so like they have some time on space like they yeah three for three or four months they maintain every backup yeah so your database could be very small i think how much gb you have worked in uh four or five gb i hope so yeah ours is in terabytes the database which currently i am maintaining is 8 tb it takes around yeah. uh, 3 It's hours 3 to yeah 3 to 4 hours to back up the database and the size of the backup is 2 tb oh uh, we do the compressed yeah. backup out of 8 tb yes, 8 tb is fine it divided yeah, so, by 5 i hope so for the compressed yeah this is also another question they will ask you my database is yeah. 100 gb what will be the sql backup which we what will be the size of the sql backup which will take no, 100 gb what will 20. be the size no 20 no 20 it will be and it will be near to 100 only it will be near to 100 around 70 80 like that why because the log file checkpoint or things only it will take so what will happen is general back but now 2005 onwards it's all compressed that's why you are seeing 20% only from 2005 yeah. onwards it's all compressed backup but earlier yeah. in sequel to 2000 and all whatever the backup we are taking same size it used to be almost 70% of okay. same size so now we are taking all comp it comes within the sql okay. server product yeah it comes with the product but earlier we used to maintain third parties like uh, uh, what are those uh, some sql i don't know sql lite sql lite you can bring in sql lite is one of the third party compressed backup which we we were using that particular product to do that now it comes now with sql even you have like red gate or something to backup right the compression thing yeah yeah red so gate we have in microsoft we use sql lite actually red gate is okay. not much but uh, dpm and sql lite but now we are not using because the product has changed and it is coming with the sql server product itself okay okay so that's how the backup size is so that's the one okay Now, okay. sure, Ajayda. Then we'll meet tomorrow. Uh, Thank you. See how. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. And uh, yeah. once the tomorrow, we will cover uh, mostly related to uh, the remaining topics, whatever we have. So we have lock covered most the, of the basic things. Yeah. Some of the lock yeah. shipping. Or uh, we'll go a little bit into the T logs. I'll just probably try to show you some of the diagrams. and okay. and this basics is over then we'll go to and that i can start only on monday or tuesday if you are not available on monday let me know how you are progressing and you need any help or during weekend call me feel free to call me i can help you out on the interview questions i'll plan to yeah, send sure. also just try to prepare all those things yeah uh, i'm okay. damn sure you should get but check it out uh yeah so i can help around but the next class will be uh, from monday or tuesday because i need to set up the practical environment uh, which i have okay. still not okay. no problem here. like even uh, i'm getting prepared for my interviews like i need to get the update yeah. from my client yet so maybe today or tomorrow i'll get the update from them 
Sure, sure. Yeah. Even yeah, entertaining. All, like, the best all these things are very, very like pretty like new for me. Some of them, uh, some of them oh, I didn't the even listen to. So some DPC commands, the page instructions, how the how it stores and everything. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. I need to get again everything. Yeah, probably just write at high level, and you can go in uh, details also. Why? Because uh, once you read the things, at least if uh, interviewer asks you something, at least one or the two points, it will be there in your mind. Yeah. So that's yeah. where you need to do a lot of reading. Apart from, I can just tell at high level, but you you should also do that kind of uh, exercise. Yeah, I definitely like studies. I already did some of the stuff, and I was taking online. I'm taking some few points more or more on it, so I'm trying to do uh, like uh, more research on the points so that I can good get some good good knowledge on those. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll also try to send you some interview questions, uh, and wish you yeah. all the best for that. Um, okay. Thank you. So okay. after tomorrow's Thank sessions, you. we'll meet probably next week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.